Hey everybody, this is Claire and this is Small Joyful Things. Uh, as always, I go out to thrift stores or I go to estate sales or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist and I look for things that either tell me a story or teach me something important and then I try to find out as much as I can about them and tell you guys about them. So here's what I've got today. Today I have this really lovely black vase. Now, okay, but first of all, what is it? You can see that it's hand painted. All of those details are on, are all done individually, but it's, you know, brush strokes. Um, the vase itself is probably, it's made of some kind of metal. That's probably brass. Um, it is very, very light and very tough. And this is probably enamel of some kind. Um, it actually has its original sticker on the bottom, partially, but we'll get to that in a sec. So get out the annoying tape measure. It's about three, let's say a little under three, maybe three and a quarter inches across. And if I'm careful, it is about six and three quarter inches high. Now, this sticker is obviously in Cyrillic, <laughs> like, and it's Russian, and I can't read Russian, but it's okay. <laughs> With a little help from Google Translate, we know what this is. So, so first of all, where did I get this from? I bought this in a thrift store. Um, I saw it and I bought it for $4, if I remember correctly. Um, I bought it just because, because it's unusual. I picked it up and I actually thought it was it was so light that I thought it was wood initially. And then finally just kind of checked the inside and I thought, no, that's not quite right. That that does not that doesn't seem like wood. It does it's it doesn't have the right kind of sound if you just tap it, you know? Or if I just like it rings. It's obviously metal. But then I was obviously looking at it, I could see that first of all it's all hand painted and I thought it was beautiful. And then looking at the bottom, I thought, oh that's that's Cyrillic and Russian and I kind of suspect it's, pr it's probably Soviet and I thought that was interesting enough that I had to find out more about this so so what exactly have we got? Put that down for a second. What we have is a thing called Petrokivka <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So what Petrokivka is it is a type of uh, it's a Ukrainian folk art uh, it's a decorative painting style and is originated in one single village in Ukraine. And it it was it's apparently it's been around for a while. It's been around since the since like the, the, the 19th century at least, but it was only really well documented around the very late 19th century, start of the 20th century. And there is a fascinating Wikipedia article all about it, and I'm gonna be linking that in the description. And I, I thought it was it was lovely just reading about it. Um so Petra Kivka was was originally something that was used to kind of decorate. It was used as for for murals. It was used to decorate homes, and you know you'd, you'd obviously paint on the walls. And there was they have a very distinctive feature. It usually comes in white. This one obviously in, in black, but the, traditionally it's on white, and it always has these love lo, these lovely floral accents. These leaves. These uh, there's always very bright reds, bright yellows, bright greens. Now. The early history is very is very interesting. It's like originally they would have they would have used this for um, like they decorate the houses, they decorate furniture, and they would actually have uh, they would actually have pre painted murals on paper <laughs> that they would actually use to put up. Um, it's like, like it's 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 really lovely. And again, the oldest paint wall paintings with floral ornaments date from the second half of the nineteenth, the beginning of the twentieth century, and. They all, likely all of a relationship or current or, origin with the Petrokivka style. I find it really interesting that this, or, like this entire style, essentially came from one village, <laughs> one village where they decided they, they decided to basically make it a thing. So, in the early twentieth century, they actually recognised it as being like a, you know, an actual, this is an actual folk art style that we should you know preserve and and take note of. And in in Ukraine anyway, uh, in in Kiev, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Because it's not Kiev anymore; it's actually Kiev. Uh, so, because they changed the name, um, so they did an exhibition in the nineteen thirties and finally started to get recognition for the actual style itself, and it brought it to the kind of the, the the greater recognition of the world. And one or two kind of artists, this one in particular, Tatiana Pata, um, 
they were they were in this after these exhibits Tatiana Pata and Nadia Belokin were awarded the honorary title Master of Folk Art. So so Tatiana Pata started kind of just started this kind of school of actually teaching this and her students effectively went on to develop Petra Kivka as a kind of legitimate style and kind of and then kind of spread you know made it more popular and kind of and started teaching more artists and it kind of just developed from there. And if you want to actually read through the history, you can you can see it. It's very it's very interesting. Now, so what have we got here? This particular little vase is obviously because we have the original sticker here. And this is kind of cool. I had to essentially look around to see if I could find anything like this as what would actually be the original sticker. And from what I can gather, this here in Cyrillic, the YCC, obviously that's not the letter, it's Cyrillic, but I don't know what Cyrillic letters are. This here stands for, U it is Ukraine Soviet Socialist Republic. So this vase was made prior to 1991 when, this, when the USSR actually broke up. And as near as I can tell, this is a reference to a factory that would have made souvenirs. So once again, we have a little souvenir piece. It's just not obvious, you know, obviously in Cyrillic. The rest of this here, the piece of the, piece of the I guess of the sticker that's left behind, as far as I can tell, this is the address and the phone number of the actual, you know, where it was sold, possibly a gift shop, who knows, as well as the price. I th that may be three rubles. I can't really tell. It's the, the sticker being incomplete is very annoying, unfortunately. Now, the, the really nice thing about, especially about reading all the stuff about Petra Kivya as an art style, is that they have specific names for all of these different, all of these different uh, brush strokes. And I just want to just go through them here a little bit, because some of them are, some of them are absolutely lovely. Um, the one here that I could, the, that I really know is was a thing called Perakidnia, Perakidnia Mazok, the tr the transitional stroke made by a single brush with two differently coloured pigments. A dry brush is dipped in first into one, e.g. green, and then into another, e.g. yellow. The result is a line of yellow paint which gradually turns into green. And that is exactly what we see here, the transitional stroke. You see here on the edge of the petal, the, the edge of the leaves here as well. And I really, I really just like that. It's so lovely to actually see like, you know, you read a Wikipedia article and it's just describing like the type of brush strokes for, for Petra Kivke as a style. And then you pick up the object and there it is, it's right there. You can just, you can, you've got a living example right here to take a look at. I absolutely love that. So there are, there is a little bit more. And I definitely read it because I found it fascinating. And okay, so... So this one itself. Now the nice thing about this is that I found one exactly the same. <laughs> if you see it here. And the thing is, is that it's the same one. You know, you can even see the design is exactly the same. This one was turned into a lamp and it's being sold somewhere in Australia because this is a black table hammer, vintage metal vase, nightlight, blah, 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 Petra Kivka painting. And selling for thirty four, uh, I think that's Australian dollars. There's a few others that are going to be. They're like this. They're like this as well. They pop up. They have a similar kind of shape. But we can assume that they're something probably from the same factory. It's just, yeah. It's some examples of what you can see. What you can see in Petra Kivka painting. The yellow, obviously, being more traditional. The the black is is definitely more contemporary. That's kind of where they've been going with it. There's another picture of the. <laughs> the vase as a, a lamp. I have to say I'm not sure I agree with that. I don't think it suits it because that wide neck just doesn't seem to work. But well, what are you going to do? A few others there. This I think was going to be more contemporary and I do like the blue. I think it works really well. So what's what's going to happen to this little piece? Um, I don't collect these type of vases. I'm very happy that I found out so much about it. I'm definitely going to be looking for it in the future because it's just very lovely and it's a very kind of it really strikes me as being kind of a very soviet type of design i don't know if that kind of makes sense that's just the feeling that i get from it this is like yes this is russian yes this is this feels something like like vintage soviet um i'm probably going to be selling it on etsy or ebay i would at a guess uh considering i bought this for four dollars i think it's actually probably worth because it's vintage again it's probably worth about maybe 20 to 30 and 20 to 30 us i would have bought it for four canadian which is not, we you know, it's not bad. Um, it's definitely a lovely little souvenir. <laughs> and I have to wonder how it got all the way to Canada. But anyway, there you have it. 
this is my small joyful thing for today. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope you like it as much as I do.